Well, the other day I was reading the account of the Ethiopian eunuch uh, who got baptized in the Book of Acts. And it just reminded me how beautifully simple it is for someone to get baptized. And when we fully read the, uh, this, this encounter and this account in the Bible, you will see that this is completely, this one passage has completely tears and removes the claws and the teeth of the entire Watchtower baptism arrangement. You will see why. But if you're a current Jehovah's Witness and you clicked on this video, I would love you to just simply consider and without any bias, just examine and listen to what you hear and then do your own research and most importantly, pray about it. But as you know, for Jehovah's Witnesses, the baptism process is something entirely different than what has been set out in the Bible. Well, Jesus himself has instructed us and commanded us to be baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now, over time, Watchtower has changed the baptism requirements and the questions asked prior to immersion, replacing the Holy Spirit with Spirit-directed organization and then removing the reference to the Holy Spirit altogether. So scriptural reference has been completely ignored in order to elevate the Watchtower organization. But before we read this account, let's have a look at what are the baptism questions of the Watchtower. Now those who are willing to get baptized, they need to answer an affirmative yes for both of these requirements and questions. Well, number one, have you repented of your sins, dedicated yourself to Jehovah and accepted his way of salvation through Jesus Christ? You should answer yes. And question number two, do you understand that your baptism identifies you as one of Jehovah's Witnesses in association with Jehovah's organization? So despite Matthew 28, 19, where Jesus has set out a very simple, but yet very powerful baptismal process, which is simply requiring that you get baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. He made no mention of affiliation with any earthly organization, has he? And whilst Watchtower has followed originally the baptism arrangements which Jesus has set out for us to follow, it has gradually deviated from it, so much so that in 1985, as you have heard, the baptismal questions replaced the Holy Spirit with a Spirit-directed organization, and uh, 2019, bluntantly disregarding Jesus' words, the Holy Spirit was removed completely. Now, the majority of the Jehovah's Witnesses are not aware of this, but a very important comment uh, was made in 1955 that was something significantly contradicted the arrangement that was introduced in 1985. And I quote, A Christian, therefore, cannot be baptized in the name of the one actually doing the immersing, or in the name of any man, nor in the name of any organization, but in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. This is Watchtower, 1955, July 1st, page 411. And another quotation from 1966, We do not dedicate ourselves to a religion, not to a man, nor to an organization. No, we dedicate ourselves to the supreme sovereign of the universe, our creator, Jehovah God himself. This makes dedication a very personal relationship between us and Jehovah. Watchtower 1966, October 1st, page 603 and 604. Now, in total disregard for these previous comments and the biblical examples, in 1985, the baptismal questions has changed, with the candidate having to announce their desire to become associated with an organization. So this newly developed baptismal exclusivism, it's a major symbolical sectarian feature and represents Watchtower's desire for stricter control and segregation of its members. Because Christian's baptism simply requires confessing faith in Jesus, followed by a full water immersion. And the simplicity of this ritual is attested in numerous New Testament examples. And some of these New Testament examples include this eunuch, the ones who presented themselves to John the Baptist, and also the 3,000 that get baptized by Peter. But let's have a read of this account of Philip and this Ethiopian eunuch. Chapter 8 in the book of Acts, verse 36 and 37. The eunuch said, Look, a body of water. What prevents me from getting baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thy heart, 
you mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Now, verse 37, if you read it from the New World Translation, you will not find it. Because the organization claims that this uh, passage, among many other verses, and entire row of passages, apparently are not included in the original manuscripts or the original scriptures. But they cannot present a single solitary proof for this claim. However, as you can see it on the screen, in the original scriptures, the original Greek manuscripts is actually very much there. But the witnesses would not find this even in their own uh, kingdom interlinear translation because it's made by, by Westcott and Hort, which I also I made a video about that already, who were very liberal and very selective, not to say biased, when they were creating this so-called Greek translation. But back to the topic, at times people were uh, baptized only in the name of Jesus alone. Peter said to them, repent and let each one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the free gift of the Holy Spirit. However, it was necessary then later to specifically ask for this Holy Spirit. Acts 8, 14 and 4 to 16, when the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they dispatched Peter and John to them and these went down and prayed for them to get the Holy Spirit, for it had not yet fallen upon any of them, but they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. So originally that's how was baptism conducted by Jehovah's Witnesses and it was, as it was originally set out in the Bible. But over time, since 1967, it said a regimented pre-baptism approval procedure has developed with the baptismal candidate answering numerous questions about Watchtower doctrine uh, as part of a process of being judged worthy by three elders. But most significantly, since 1985, the candidate declares that they're devoting themselves to the organization when answering the two pre-immersion questions. But this was changed to 124 questions in the 1983 organized to accomplish our ministry and finally to 104 questions in the 2005 organized to do Jehovah's Will, page 182 till 216. But hang on, there is no biblical precedence to pass an exam before getting baptized. The Watchtower claims that Jews needed no such exam because they already knew Jehovah's requirements and commandments and they simply have to confess faith in Jesus in order to get baptized. But this is of course is nonsense because even in Jesus' day there were several different Jewish sects with a whole different range of beliefs. The Pharisees and the Sadducees has radically different views regarding the resurrection and other Jews has very little knowledge about the religious teachings and the Mosaic law. In addition to this, Jesus himself has revealed that he has done away with the mosaic law and its arrangement of animal sacrifices, making Christianity significantly different from Judaism. So despite theological differences between this, the Jewish thinking and Christianity, baptism only required a person, such as this eunuch, to declare faith in Jesus Christ. So rather than follow the biblical example of confessing faith in Christ to be baptized, to be baptized as one of Jehovah's Witnesses, it requires a very intricate knowledge of the Watchtower doctrines and dedication to the Watchtower organization. Now, Watchtower encourages uh, the youngsters to get baptized at a very early age. Now, the biblical example is Jesus himself has set the, the example for that when he got baptized at the age of 30. Because does a 15-year-old even comprehend what they are devoting themselves to? Because the brain does not reach maturity at the age of 25, and this is why at the age of 16, a person is too young to legally get married, uh, drive a car, or drink alcohol, smoke, enlist in the army, or even vote. Yet by that age, the Watchtower expects dedication to an organization that can disfellowship a person and force shunning if they ever change their mind, regardless whether they're 17 or 70. Besides, baptism does not stop a person to have temptations, to have doubts later on in life. Okay, they may think twice before doing wrong or contemplating the consequences of uh, being disfellowshipped or being shunned, in which case such protection equates to bribery. Even so, two-thirds who has raised as Jehovah's Witnesses are eventually leave the religion. 
with baptism as opposite as protection, as it sets the child up later for the devastating consequences of being shunned. Now, I suppose the Watchtower is right about one thing, that uh, baby baptism or infant baptism are not biblical, they're not scripturally required or even permitted for these very reasons I just mentioned. And I have nothing against you uh, baptizing your baby, but all it does is really is just to get the kid wet. Because baby baptism is a simply just a child dedication, it's simply you presenting your child to the Lord, trusting that the Lord's hand will be upon the child and eventually leading them to him. But a believer baptism is a total conscious surrendering to God's will something that they have full understanding of what it stands for and trust in it. It's a revelation. Baptism is us dying for ourselves and then raised up again onto a new life. So although baptism is a public declaration of an inner conviction, but it's also a result of another baptism that happens before that. Let's have a look at the uh, book of Acts chapter 10 verses 44 to 48. While Peter yet spoke these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which had heard the word. And they of the circumcision, or the Jews, which believed, were astonished, and as many as came with Peter, Peter because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized? which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. So what happens first, those who have heard the word, not just simply physically hear it, but hear it and putting faith in it. Hear it by faith, the Holy Ghost fell upon them, so they get sealed. And then Peter said, who can forbid water from these who had received the Holy Spirit? So first we get baptized by the Holy Spirit, and then as a public declaration, you get baptized in water. Because 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13 also says that for by one Spirit we were all baptized into one body. So this order also being confirmed by Ephesians 1.13, which says that Christ, in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom af also after that you believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. So hearing the word, believe in it, put your trust and faith in Christ, boom, you receive the Holy Spirit of promise. Then as you publicly declare this faith in these things, you get water baptized. Because even John the Baptist says in Mark 1.8 that I indeed have baptized you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. And he was talking about Jesus, right? And in verse 15, Jesus himself said that the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. So what is repentance? Believe the gospel. Put your faith in what he has done for you. He accomplishing salvation for you. So now you putting your faith, trust, and reliance on what Jesus has done, as a result of believing the gospel, you receive the Holy Ghost. Okay, I realize I've gone a little bit too far with the spirit baptism and then the water baptism. But the whole point is, is for Jehovah's Witnesses to see how the Watchtower baptism arrangement is so unbiblical and so unscriptural and how far they have actually deviated and made the organization is something to be baptized into rather than be baptized into the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, as Jesus instructed us to do. And as this Ethiopian eunuch confessed simply that he believed that Jesus was the Son of God, that all it was required. Because Philip said, if you believe it with all thy heart, you may. You may what? You may be baptized. That's all. That's it. Nothing else. So don't take this lightly, please. Because your salvation is far too important of a thing just to throw it away. Even though the organization is not completely denying the presence and the requirement of the Holy Spirit for someone to be baptized, it doesn't mean you have to dedicate your whole life and your salvation prospects to an organization and putting your faith and your trust in fallible men. Jesus has forgiven already all your sins if you put your faith in him alone. 
So how much sins have you left on your account to pay for? None. He took it all away. He made you clean. And this is all that it requires for you to receive this Holy Spirit, is to simply believe the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, the good news of your salvation, and putting your faith and trust in Christ Jesus. And you shall be sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. I hope this video was eye-opening and I hope you will consider all that you heard. Above all, confirm all these what I've said in Scripture. Then pray about it and see what God will tell you. God bless you all, I love you all, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye. Guaranteed fresh? Ah, this is going to be expensive. Wait, it's not expensive? It's an Aldi thing. We have a special show tonight. Tonight's show is not going to be about... Donald Trump or the Electoral College uh, or the vaccine. We want not even about men tell all. Tonight I have an entre